If everybody just wants to get their paint uh, out, and uh, this is just going to be um, playtime, just to see what happens when you mix. Um, let the watercolor, let the let the pigment mix on the paper, as opposed to uh, mixing it over here in my palette. So if I want a red apple, and I'll just do an apple. So everybody knows how to paint an apple or draw an apple or whatever, I guess. So anyway, it basically it's uh, just a shape. So here's my uh, apple uh, shape. There's, I'm gonna leave a little white there for a highlight. And uh, I guess I could make that apple a little rounder. So while it's still wet, I'm gonna drop some uh, red in here. And uh, so there's some red, here's some red going on down there and that's gonna make uh, orange. And now I'm gonna make uh, more red. And this doesn't have to be crazy, uh, crazy good. Uh, you know, if it were rounder, it could be a tomato, I don't care. Uh, anyway, uh, so there is, uh, there's some red, there's some orange. I can still lift on this. Uh, I can still have, uh, I'm gonna add some, I'm gonna add some magenta. And I'm gonna go down here. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna give it a little, uh, let the watercolor paint itself. And I'm gonna add some, uh, dark right through this area uh, and leave that ambient light kick there and uh, put a little dark up there. So you can see pretty quickly, you have a pretty cool looking piece of fruit or whatever. And then I can just take uh, anything that I have left, but I'm, I'm doing this all on the paper. Um, And we'll see if we can't make, uh, I'm gonna go back to my yellow and uh, maybe I'll just do a, a leaf like that. And then I'll just go back to my uh, blue and I'll say, okay, I just want to put, mix that blue and that uh, yellow uh, together. And so there's part of uh, a leaf. And now I think I will mix. Uh... Oh, look, I had a contaminated one. So that's a uh, blue and yellow. So I kind of like that light green. Um, looking at that, and I think I'll just make a little darker version of that. And uh, let's see if I can. Let's see if I can make a... There we go. That wasn't very many strokes either. So I think that is much more interesting than, in fact, I could make this a little darker uh, down through here. And what color are you using for that? Just contaminated, some magenta, some purple. But I used uh, I used all the the reds and the oranges. I'll go back and use a little bit more red uh, if I wanted a little more whatever in here, and I could uh, put some a little bit of spatter on there. So anyway, it's just making an apple. So if I wanted to make a um, a plum, I'm going to use some uh, thalo, and uh, I think I am. Yeah. So I'm going to make a a plum, I'm just gonna make a ball here. And so instead of mixing the plum color, which is kind of uh, that, uh, I'm gonna use some uh, magenta with that. And uh, let that mix, let that mix on the paper and try to make a plum this way. I try to get that plum color this way. Uh, 
anyway, so you can see what I'm doing here. So, and uh, I could even put another little, uh, I used, I don't know what I used. I think I used a Lizarin Crimson. I, this is a short set right here. I don't have that many colors, uh, but you can kind of see that you can do quite a bit with uh, not much, not much happening. So anyway, it's a nice little warm up. And I could even take some of that green. Uh, so I had some yellow and I had some uh, blue and I'm making uh, some more green. So I'm gonna put a couple little uh, green uh, spatters on this apple. That's kind of cool, kind of fun. I don't know if I want to eat that apple. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can see you can see that, uh, and uh, of course, as it dries too, uh, I could take uh, advantage of that. I'm going to use some more of that. Um, not sure which red that was. I think I only have one red on here. I'm just going to take some thicker uh, paint. And uh, I just want to see what happens. So I'm just going to do that. And I could do the same thing over here, uh, but it's fun to play with these. And it's a nice little way to warm up. And I could just uh, pull some, uh, there's a little shadow for that. Just pull some uh, color out of uh, what's, uh, what's above. The bottom of that anyway and uh, I can neutralize that or cool that uh, cool that off uh, anyway it's no big deal anyway it's just fun to play so to tr tr try to do uh, that because if I mixed up a color of purple and I already have it here. Uh, so here's my uh, purple plum. I'll just use purple. There's my purple uh, plum. Kind of, sort of. Uh, I think this one is more interesting than that one. And uh, yes, I can make it closer together in contrast and value. I'm overworking these just to try to demo them. Uh, I need some more dark down there for separation. And uh, some of this you'll get by granulation, uh, but you can get uh, a, a lot more interest by letting it mix on the page. So here's my uh, apple. My red apple. Hey, it looks like a tomato. Now it looks more like an apple. Anyway, this one's much more fun for me, to me. How about that? You like the way it mixes better? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually quite a bit more fun. Try it with a flower, try it with a building. You have a warm uh, and cool side to a building uh, or a piece of uh, 
uh, on your travels? A building? Yeah, the stock of a building. I don't go to building in the town. No. <laughs> okay, the know. forest. Okay, I could do that. Instead of just green trees, there are uh, all kinds of green or trunks of trees or a rock next to a river. There's all kinds of color in there. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, my apple looks like it's really going south, though. Well, I I kind of overworked uh, <laughs> mine. It just not one you want to cut, pick up. But that's okay. Uh, you, <laughs> you, uh, just uh, take a page and paint a bunch of different stuff. Paint what? Paint your tabaret. Uh, doesn't make any difference. Paint anything that you want. No, it's cool. Um, oh. You are going to drive me crazy, Adobe. Seven, nine, four, nine, four. I wonder why she did it. I am still recording, even though I'm at it, but Adobe, uh, I guess I have to be good because <laughs> I'm still recording. Open with, let's see if Photoshop. Okay, here's uh, here's a, a painting that um, Holly did from her trip to Mammoth Lakes, and uh, this is kind of like the Notenizer, uh, but it's not. It's using uh, Photoshop, and I'm going to go up here to Image, and it's going to give me three choices: Auto Tone, Auto Contrast, and Auto Color. And uh, we'll just try one and see how we like it. So Auto Tone that did that to it. So uh, the, it brought the color up and the light up, gave it a little more contrast and interest. Let's see what happens when I do auto contrast. Almost nothing. That's, isn't that interesting? Almost nothing. And uh, auto color, let's see. And that just changed the color slightly. So let's do this. Let's, isn't that weird why, mm -hmm. why, it, why it wouldn't, and it did it on, uh, it did it on another one. It did it on your other painting. So, uh, so I'm going to play with uh, levels, and uh, I'm just going to uh, slide this mid-tone for darker, and oh, I'm going to yeah. slide this uh, uh, lighter one for, uh, to lighten it up, so you can see the difference mm -hmm. right away uh, of, of how much more dramatic, and uh, there were just a few uh, slight changes. I mean, this is, it's going from kind of this mm -hmm. to this. Yeah. And so it even uh, saturated the color a little bit more. <laughs> so that's what your other two did. Mm -hmm. So that's where you made the leap, but you're almost there. Mm -hmm. So you just have to keep painting, you just have to keep doing keep it. Keep adding. It. It, well, just keep doing, just keep painting. Mm -hmm. and but this you, is a good exercise for sure, easy. Yeah, especially for you because mm -hmm. you know Photoshop mm -hmm. much better than I do. So anyway, if I took a, uh, if I took a screenshot of that and then I kind of compared the two together, I see a shadow over here too. <laughs> I'm famous for that. Uh, don't say. So uh, now I've got uh, now I've got this guy, and I've got this guy. And, uh, it's not as much as we could do, but uh, and then the original looks completely different. I mean the picture. Yeah, the, the original. Uh, the actual photograph. The actual photograph. Yeah, and it, well, this is what I pulled off of the 
mm -hmm. cluster. So you can see the difference, and I really didn't do much yeah. to it. I just but it makes so it makes the, the highlights pop more too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it gives it a sense of light. This mm -hmm. had this really had a sense of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looked like a marine layer was in, as opposed to this one, and that's much more like your photograph. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so there's just a little uh, example. I might post those. Uh, I'll send them to Holly, and she can do what she wants to. Okay. But anyway, uh, so that's uh, that's a good little uh, lesson to uh, learn. I think. Yeah, especially with that one, I was like, I don't know what to do with it. Oh, by the way, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, especially. Uh, uh, the camcorder. So here's my uh, here is my um, little software download. I think all cameras have these. Uh, so here's where I can change the brightness of my my picture, <coughs> what the camera's seeing. Hmm. Oh, I have to get rid of this guy. There we go. And uh, now let's see if I can. Yeah, there we go. So that's just changing the brightness of what my camera's seeing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also the color intensity, which I think is pretty good. Uh, but the contrast uh, is going to make a big uh, difference in the way we see this. It does to me because uh, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to to uh, teach this. And what I found what was a big deal for me was this autofocus. Where is this the download you're talking about? This Logitech. This is a Logitech camera, and they had this little uh, software uh, driver that I keep in my dock down here that you load for your particular camera. And if you double click on it, this is what controls the camera. Oh, cool. What, where the, you, so you, I, go to the, you go to the website to download it? Yes. Whoever, uh, whoever uh, is your camera brand, Go to their website and see if they have a driver for that camera. Okay. See, I can control, I can control the uh, focus on this. It says I could put it on autofocus. Uh, it's not too bad, so I'll try that and see what happens. But I just uh, autofocus isn't too bad. But I, I uh, and then I'm going to have to uh, I'll go back to my. And get rid of it's got a little more saturation on that too. Uh, yes, it's a little more saturation depending on, on your uh, uh, white balance and all that other crap, which I don't pay attention to. <laughs> of course, I'm listening. I know. <laughs> so anyway, and it also it depends. I saw now I left it on autofocus. So it's a it's a webcam. It's not a thousand dollar or fifteen or five thousand dollar camera it's a 50 dollar camera okay with a plastic lens <laughs> how do you launch it you launch it from your desktop yeah i've got it i just uh, opened it once i open it from my application folder uh, it goes on my dock and so down here on my dock this this is it camera settings so uh, go to your brand of your camera and uh the manufacturer and put in uh Camera, uh, soft, uh, camera setting software. And uh, if they have one, it's not guaranteeing they'll have one, but if they have one, this will come up. So. Yeah, the, the, the one I have, I have the Logitech. Is, do we have the same one, the 925 or something? Uh, B20, B525. Yeah, I think that's the one I have. Yes, uh, go to Logitech and go to B525 camera setting. And that way you can uh, do the same thing I just did. And I go to advanced and I can do the autofocus or I can do the, um, um, I can use the slider myself. I can control the brightness. Uh, I can control the contrast, uh, color intensity. It looks a little bit too intense. This is all really pretty controllable. And I'll just click off on that and go back to this. And this is uh, from my camera. My camera is not a 16 by nine uh, camera. 
And of course, I'm blowing this. Uh, I'm blowing this way up. <laughs> Yeah, if I uh, find the link later, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'll look it up. Okay. Because I had, uh, I got a video from some guy who teach you how to get HD quality on Zoom because Zoom, when you see it on your camera, it looks fine. But then when you record it and broadcast it, it kind of shrinks it to the yeah um, exactly 480 and 360 and the bad quality. So you he ended up going through that and you go to share uh, view. I'll right. send you the I send you the uh, okay. It, it's very interesting. I haven't tested it out, but that's another way. Yeah, I'd like to know more. And there's one that's really good. This guy give you all kinds of advice on the audio as well as video and also how stream all the on a multi-platform streaming and all that so gotcha i'm gonna try this uh sky Yeah, I've noticed that if I do a screen recording off my QuickTime, it's better quality than the Zoom recording. Yeah. That's because Zoom just shrink everything to save to save the yeah, compresses it. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Okie dokie. Um, oh, that's pretty good size, I guess. And you can still see my palette. And I'm going to uh, print this out. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to print this out. Uh, so I'll have the same. I won't have any, any advantage uh, to any of this. I'm going to use the same reference. The same reference. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to use this as my uh, reference over here, and uh, we'll see what we can uh, what we'll see what we can do with it. And I'm going to let again I'm going to let the paint uh, mix on uh, the paper in a lot of these cases. And even though I did, uh, I'll show you real quick. Even though I did this, this is for you. Uh, this is the same thing, only I broke it down into shapes. And uh, for somebody that's not familiar with it, this is not a bad way to go. But if you do draw this out, do not. In fact, I think I will print this out as well. Uh, do not uh, draw it uh, heavy handed. Draw it very lightly. You know, John's been at the uh, breakfast bar three times now, or is it four? Why don't you just teach the class? That's all you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what they're missing. They've got, we've got the, the buffet here. Oh, that's great. Lorna's in there. Uh, Holly's going to want to switch to Monday now. Because Monday, for Lorna's sure. Monday for sure. Monday for the kitchen. <laughs> Those are beautiful. 
that, that's uh, that's all I'm trying to give you guys to, and I'm sure you discovered it yourself. Okay. Letting the yeah. letting the 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 uh, paint mix on the paper. So here's my reference. Here's my reference. I'm going to be looking at, and you can look it up in the uh, upper left hand uh, corner. And I'm going to clean my palette. So okay. Here's a score. Yeah. Okay. If, you, if you need it or you want to. Yeah, I'll use it in a second. You're uh, just getting set up, right? Yeah. Uh, take your time. I'm just cleaning my palette from our. I don't want green. <laughs> Holly tried to uh, fool us with all those Northern light paintings. It was a, her test. I just told you how. Throw us off the track. But. Did you get up to the Northern lights? Oh. Been Where? to uh, Iceland several times. Oh yeah, I like Iceland. I've been there too. Oh yeah. Not for the God, Northern you guys ought to compare notes. I forgot, he's been to Milford Sound too. Been around. Where's New Mil Zealand. Oh, in New Zealand. Yeah. I painted Milford Sound. I thought it was beautiful, and then all of a sudden, I know all these all these people. Oh, I've been there. Just like, yeah. Oh, I went to uh, you know San Francisco for. Yeah. <laughs> How about the Taj Mahal? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna get out my big, big, big brush. My big brush for this size. It's not that big. Here's a hake that's a little bit bigger. You could use that too. And uh, I am not going to look at this black and white one. I'm just going to look at the color one. I'm going to look at the. I'm going to look at the background. Here's where I'm going to look. I'm painting watercolor, so I'm painting light to dark, and I'm uh, looking at this uh, light midtone back here. This is my light source. That's going to be my lightest uh, in color and value. Uh, so this is bluey. This goes to purpley. This goes to orangey. Uh, and then this stays uh, fairly bright up there. So I'm going to see if I can't do what I did on that one uh, video. <clears throat> oh, that's going to be pretty blue. Okay, and the paper's dry. That's going to be pretty blue. I'm I'm going to wet the paper. In fact, I think I'm going to wet it with the hake. I could just uh, spray the paper. Yeah, I'm just going to wet this uh, paper, and my water's a little contaminated, but that's why you see that little. Uh, tone there that warm gray kind of tone so my paper is pretty damp and it's drying top to bottom because i've got uh, mr mr Joe, could you could you say what colors you're using as you go along please yeah i will thanks um i'm going to start okay. off using a uh, cobalt okay and um, i have already got this color on the page mixed up i got the wrong well and i went to um some phthalo in there. Uh, so I got the wrong well, so what the heck. Anyway, uh, I'm just gonna put that down and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be very uh, bold with uh, this. Um, I want that to stay uh, a fairly decent uh, blue. And when I get down into here, I'm gonna start purpling it up and I'm just gonna use uh, some purple. I think that's my purple. I had some magenta left in, yeah, uh, some magenta left in there. And uh, I'm going to add some uh, purple up here. I'm painting these in uh, just big shapes. Uh, and you can see that I'm just letting the paint itself, uh, basically. And that red was already in there. Huh? Yeah, it was just contaminated, so I don't care. Okay. I don't care. Anyway, I'm going to come down to maybe uh, here with my purple, and that's an awful lot of water in there. And now I'm going to start my um, I'm going to start my orange. 
I can't remember. I think I took the uh, I think I took that bottom part out of yeah you did you uh, had like a horizon line yeah I think I took that dark part on my reference uh, out of there and uh, so now I can start adding a little uh, yellow and again I'm trying to uh, boy oh boy. I, I'm uh, trying to, uh, I've got some pigment right there. I'm just going to let that go. I'm not trying to be too careful, am I? But it's kind of sort of looking like uh, this uh, sky, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And I'm letting the watercolor in a lot of cases paint itself. It's painting itself. Uh, I'm going to go... See, that's going to stay fairly wet. I, would, I didn't want it to be quite that wet, but now I'm using some, uh, I'm blotting my brush off because I've got all these paints already energized. And uh, I forgot uh, that I'm going to make this a little more uh, colorful than what it actually is. I forgot that I just did this uh, drill for the... <laughs> for the painting the apples and the plums. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I think I'm going to take a, I'm going to start using a smaller brush. I'm still using these flats. You can use rounds. You can do whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm going to um, add some um, orange over here. And I'm painting this as it's drying and it's, it's kind of drying from uh, the top. And I'm going to uh, wipe, look at that. Isn't that cool how you can just lift that out of there? In fact, I'm gonna just take and lift that. Oh, look at that. Sunlight. Already, already. I'm gonna take some, um, uh, blue. I'm going to take some of that uh, blue that I have. I'm going to add a little Payne's uh, gray to it. I'm going to darken that uh, blue up. I'm going to use some of that alizarin to, uh, that I have left on my palette to make it uh, purplier. And this is where uh, <clears throat> if I see that this paper is starting to uh, dry out too much, which it is, uh, first I'm just going to put some paint on there. That's purple? It's uh, Payne's, uh, it, it, it's Payne's um, gray that I've used uh, to, uh, I added the, what blue I had left on my uh, palette and uh, also I added um, some alizarin back in. Alizarin looks like the reddish. Yeah, alizarin is like a magenta-y kind of sort of. So that's what I'm adding right now. And uh, let see, I have something going on over here. I want to try to keep these cloud-like uh, places. I don't want what's happening here, which is that blue and the yellow. So I'm going to just add some orange. Over there, I'm letting this paint itself. This is the wet part of the letting it paint itself. And uh, by the way, I have this uh, uh, atomizer. I'm gonna spray that up there because I wanted that to be a little bit uh, wetter. And I can put some of these clouds in and that's and these those clouds are going to um, soften out considerably. Under here, I'm catching a little bit of this light coming here. So that's the reason that the light is under the clouds. I love the blue and that uh, orange together. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll even try to uh, blot. Let's see what happens when we blot. 
too big of a lot, but I did pick up a little light color in there. And uh, I'm gonna This is really getting to be dry now. So I'm just gonna take and blot this out just a little bit. That gives me a nice little white sparkle, light sparkle in there. Uh, this is not going to look exactly like your reference, so get over it. In fact, this is uh, not too bad just the way it is. So I'm going to add, a, now that it's dried a little bit more, I'm going to add a little uh, more of a uh, purpley. And this is about, uh, this is really a nice time for this uh, uh, paint uh, because it's, the paper is just the right dampness, dampness. And design wise, I'm going to kill a little bit of this up here. Bring this down a little bit. I'm squinting my eyes and looking at this now and I'm saying, okay, how can I, how can I kind of um, make a little more sense out of this? And don't worry about all this other stuff uh, at the end. Uh, you can go back and you can fix anything as we found out last week. I have a nice little orange uh, guy going through there. I have something going through there. I want a little bit more contrast in there. This is what I wanted. Well, look, I'm getting some of this beautiful little, uh, I don't know how I got that speckle in there, but I did. And this is the color uh, mixing on the paper. So I put down purple and now I'm just putting down a little uh, blue. And I'm hopefully gonna let a little bit of that uh, seep down this edge. Soften that edge, soften this edge over here, let a little bit of that color seep down. We're getting there. I'm gonna keep most of the orange on that side. I see some of it up here, uh, but I think I'm gonna try to keep that. In fact, I think I'm going to uh, keep this, uh, simplify this just by a little uh, clean water because I want all the action. I want your eye to be, to go to here. That's pretty easy to just uh, lift a little bit. A clean damp brush. I think I still want to uh, simplify this. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this darker color and I'm going to just do that. <gasps> what would you do? I'm designing now. I'm designing my, uh, my painting. I want to uh, dirty this up just a little bit. I want that to be that soft edge right there. I'm gonna take some of that yellow, just a little of it. And that's too yellow for me. I don't, I don't use yellow yellow very often. But you'll notice, how did I start? I started with that blue down to purple with a little bit of that warm orange color in there. And look at how this wet and wet has painted itself while I've been yakking and talking and... Uh, 
doing all the other stuff. So now I got to let this dry before I, well, I don't have to let it dry. Let's not let it dry. I'm just going to uh, start putting some of these uh, trees in there, but I'm going to use fairly thick uh, paint. And I'm going to make them dark. I'm going to use some Payne's gray and I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to use some alizarin with that Payne's gray and make this beautiful burgundy, burgundy kind of color. And I want to use uh, almost a pure paint. You could put this thing anywhere you wanted to put it. In fact, I'll show you. I'm just going to make a uh, distant uh, hill back here of something. And uh, then I'm going to start putting a, a few trees in. And it might still be really too wet. But I'm going to see what happens with that. And that'll work because that'll uh, make those uh, trees be way in the distance. Just something to give it a, a base. And I'm going to put just a couple little of those guys over there. little perimeter to this um, farm or whatever, whatever it is. And in fact, I think what I'll do is I'm going to make a taller tree right about uh, here. Just to break up that, uh, just to break that up. You could make this foreground like like a kind of an ocean thing, couldn't you? Like you could do it anything you want. Reflective. We're just we're just doing the sky. Yeah. You can do that any or, way you want. Right. While this is still damp, I'm going to take some of that uh, purple uh, color that I had mixed with the orange. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit on that side, a little bit on this side, uh, because I want to pull this curtain to this light spot right here. Right? That's all I'm trying to do is pull that curtain to that lighter spot. And uh, I think this is uh, worth a, a dry right now, but I'm going to take the tape off and see this is my basic uh, painting to start. Now I can go back and uh, I can see what, what do I have? What can I add my detail? Do I put... Uh, depending on where I am. Uh, if I'm at the beach, if I'm at the shore, then it might be a different place. I can go back and I can work this area a little bit more, but I think the big stuff, the big shapes that I'm concerned with, the design that I'm concerned with, uh, I think are, are all there. That's just uh, my personal opinion, but um, anyway, uh, there we go. That's my start. <laughs> I can go back and I can soften edges. I can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, but right now, I think what I'm trying to do is just capture this. Did I capture this? Uh, yes. In fact, I think I did. I, I think what I did was a little more interesting. Oh, absolutely. Way more interesting. Anyway. Uh, so there you go. Uh, just so just go for it. Be confident, be loose with it. I know I'm going to want to uh, soften this a little bit. Here's my clean, damp brush. Here's my 
uh, towel. Uh, so I'm just going to, uh, I said clean damp brush, right? I just got done doing those trees. <laughs> mm, yeah. So that wasn't so clean. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to soften that just to taste. So I'm just going to do that and blot. Uh, so that's a little bit softer, fuzzier. I'm going to add one more of these little guys right here. And that's fine because I don't want it to be quite as white as the other guy. I can go back and I can add a little sky hole up here. Look how easy that is. And all these little places. Doesn't make any difference what brush you use. Anyway, so now I'm, uh, I'm going to connect these guys a little bit. Now I'm wiping. And if I wanted to, I could just take this uh, this clean towel, <laughs> uh, this clean towel a little bit, and uh, I'm just gonna pull a little bit. I should put a piece of tape down there, huh? There we have a little, just a little uh, hint of mm -hmm. some uh, rays of light coming down through here. So that was kind of easy to do. When you said design, Joe, you, you just wanted the design. What would it be like the dark here and there and here? Well, here, here's my design. If I go back to this, if I go back to this as my design, I've got this kind of oh, okay. swoop okay. right here. And that's what I, I uh, when I, when I did this, it was too interesting up here. Mm -hmm. I didn't want you to look up here. I wanted everything to kind of come down okay. to this area. Okay. So, and I can still add, uh, I wouldn't have to, but I could still add, I, there's my lightest spot right there. I saved kind of, uh, I could still add uh, white paint if I wanted to really zap that up. Uh, I might lower this a little bit. But maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just leave it the way it is. It's just a, it's just a demo for, for this. And it, look at all this wet and wet. Look at how it all painted itself. And I actually painted this wet to dry or wet to damp, mm -hmm. wet to almost dry, because that's how I could get a little of this happening here, which has more of a defined edge than any of this stuff. But when I first put it on, it was pretty wet. Mm -hmm. And then as it started to dry, I would get a softer edge. I could still work it. And remember, I put that glob of pigment on there. And uh, look what happened, how it dissipated. Mm -hmm. So I've still got this uh, little guy right here. So for example, if I wanted to, say, do some touch up, I've got this little orange back here. I want to just make a little bit go on the other side and maybe even peek through uh, that tree. Mm -hmm. So it goes through. So there's just a, a little bit of whatever and I'm just using my finger to wipe it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any difference. So I can now is the paper still not completely dry yet. So I can still and uh, also if I wanted to connect that blue with that blue I'm just going to take and um, uh, massage that out just a little bit. In fact, I think I'm going to take some of that blue uh, with my uh, water and uh, just uh, blot that until it comes back down into here. And then I'm going to go back and add, add some color to it. So now I've kind of got that. Uh, now I've kind of got that that little opening that that can travel down okay. to connect those shapes. That's what I mean by the design. Okay. But I don't want to do that at the start because then I'll be hesitant to put in these big strokes. These big. It's just a general idea. I'm trying yeah. to just capture the big strokes, the essence of it. You can imagine if you were painting this a quarter this size, you wouldn't have the time. You, you wouldn't have it. You wouldn't put in all those little petty strokes. You would just go for it. 
See, that shape to me now is pretty interesting. That shape is as contrasty as that is. It's a more interesting shape. It's a it's that diagonal that's leading my eye down to that light. This is a horizontal. This is a horizontal that's leading my eye down to that light. These rays are leading my eye up to that light. So that's not bad. Except um, so I see what you're doing with the, you know, this yeah. sort of stops here, goes here, and then it stops. So if I was to keep this more open. Yeah, well, well, I'm just trying. Once I see it, it's just telling me what to do. Yeah, I'm not. It's telling me. I'm not telling it. It's telling me. Oh, and John's standing there. So what happens if we connect those shapes a little? Bit? <coughs> Makes sense. Yeah, because right now I just I had that cut off, and so now I connected it, and that's just a thing that comes from painting. Mm -hmm. It comes from seeing. You don't have to paint. Mm -hmm. You see it because mm -hmm. you say, oh, it's not quite right yet. I need five more minutes. I'm going to wait five more minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I know that that little backlight is going to be over here. It's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. all. Whereas a, one of your students would say, oh, I don't see anything. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, exactly. I don't see anything. Yeah, what are you looking at? I remember uh, David Gallup and I were painting at the beach. I, I sat in on one of those plein air groups. And uh, he says, look at that rock. We were just on Westward Beach looking at that rock crop. Uh, yeah, Westward Beach. Anyway, uh, uh, he says, don't you see that? Uh, what color is that rock? You know, he says, don't you see that orange in there? Or don't you see that purple in there? And I just said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I see, and now I can't help myself. I mean, I don't even know why I said that, mm -hmm. but I couldn't. I was just being honest. I said, no, you know. Now, of course, if you're painting it, you see all kinds of colors in those rocks. So anyway, this is this would be no different for me for painting a, uh, this is a pretty zappy sunset sky, but if you're just painting a blue sky and it didn't have to be, or a atmospheric sky, it wouldn't have to be that that uh, involved, but anyway, let me see if I can adjust this brightness and adjust this. Uh, Lorna went to the farmer's market. I'm going to go to this uh, camera setting thing and see if I can't. Uh, Adjust this a little bit. Especially. Oh, there it is right there. That's the best spot. And the intensity, wow. Borrow this show. It's back, back, yeah. Let's back off on that intensity just a little bit. That might be a little bit better. Let's see if that translates to my quick time. Different camera. Oh, that's not too bad. Hey, it looks better smaller, so I'm going to make it smaller. <laughs> Everything looks better smaller. Mm -hmm. And no, I didn't scrape some little trunks in there or whatever. I just wanted some. I just wanted some earth. That's all I wanted. Anyway. Does anybody have any questions about color eating? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. You can just you can see that I use this guy for inspiration, and I didn't have to follow it exactly. Right. 
uh, and it, it, if I looked at this and I looked at that, yes, it's very similar, but it's, uh, it's different, that's all. It's, I it's, did have one question, Joe. You said you used alizarin. Um, yes. Why, how is that different from, say, imperial purple or something? It's redder. It's more magenta. Okay, so you can just add a little bit more magenta. Got it. Right. But it what, doesn't behave differently. Uh, what I do is uh, alizarin uh, comes from doing people, portraits or uh -huh. people because it's uh, mixed with uh, either yellow ochre or uh, some kind of uh, yellow. It makes good flesh tones. Uh, but alizarin is a great, uh, great color for um, clouds when you mix it with uh, uh, Payne's gray because it okay. turns uh, into a burgundy. Got it. Okay. And I'm Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to kill that just slightly over there. So there's my orange, my most orange uh, spot. And uh, I kind of like, uh, I'm just going to leave it alone. Otherwise, it'll be less fresh. So I showed you how the wet and white works and painting till it gets wet on wet, wet on uh, damp. Um, and then wet on almost dry and I think uh, it it has a uh, it, it's connected because it's uh, just a, a difference in the edges but it's all uh, interrelated and I just painted till I started getting a uh, harder edges uh, till the end so it's kind of a all a prima kind of a painting I mean, I said I was going to let it dry, so, uh, and I see one little spot which uh, I just want to soften without uh, ruining the uh, paper. So I'm just going to put a little thing right there and use a uh, damp uh, brush and just uh, soften this little spot. There we go. That was just too much of a, a hard edge for me. Was too distracting, so this makes a better, uh, better layer out of it. Let's me float down through here and make this a nice transition. Anyway, I'm going to call that uh, done for me. I just um, dropped water on there. No worries. I don't know where this uh, little uh, texture came from here, but I love it. I don't know where it came from. Anyway, so you can design this uh, to uh, be at the beach, be up in the mountains, back here, put pine trees in, put rocks in, make this a path, make that a river, whatever you want to do. Kind of fun. <clears throat> Master of the universe. I'm going to pause that. It should be, that should be. <laughs> okay, this is one of Holly's photos, and we're going to try to paint this. This is one we used for an example earlier in this program where we uh, strengthen the contrast or whatnot. Uh, anyway, I've lowered the horizon just a little bit. Uh, so I see I have some uh, trees over here. And boy, this pencil is like, wow. And I have this, uh, this arch, the C curve coming down to about right here. It's not halfway, it's about right there. And then it goes into those, into that guy. And then I have, oh boy. Well, 
Boy, this pencil must have gotten some stuff on it. I can hardly make a mark with it. Anyway, that's that's uh, actually actually fine with me. So I have this river, and I have this. Uh, I'm going to make uh, that river. And go off like that. Joe, it's Edie. I'm going to have to leave early. I have a doctor's appointment. So I'll see you all next week. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. That's, um, that's more than enough uh, that I need. I'm not going to draw the clouds because uh, I don't want that mark getting in the way of those clouds. In fact, we can do a little bit, maybe we'll do a little bit more with that uh, sky anyway. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to use Mr. Gravity again. And I think I'm going to have to get some clean water. Hey, I got my paper towel in my uh, left hand, my brush in my right hand. I'm going to use a contaminated palette. I'm going to use some of that uh, blue that we used before. I'm just going to use, I'm going to use actually uh, some uh, cerulean. And uh, I'm going to wet this, but I'm going to wet it with uh, some color. And while that's still wet, I want to go right across the top of that like that. And I'm going to um, try to go around some of these uh, clouds that we're seeing here. And this gets very light uh, down here at the bottom, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. And... I can make this a little wispier. I'm going to use some of this uh, purple, kind of purple, but I'm going to mix some uh, raw sienna, raw, yeah, raw sienna into it. Uh, I just want some kind of a warm uh, gray. I really, oh, that, there we go. I did touch it. <laughs> While this is still wet, I'm going to soften this edge a little bit. I'm going to put this little uh, guy up here, this wispy cloud that's in that uh, photo. Uh, I'm just going to use my uh, paper towel. Uh, I'm going to just use this to paint with. Because this is not about the sky. This is definitely not about the sky. I'm going to put uh, a little darker and a little darker while that's still wet. And maybe just warm that up just a tad. And we'll just put a little bit of that going on in there, wipe it off a little bit, but that gives me the warmth that I wanted. Anyway, now we can start painting the rest of this. And the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some of my uh, gamboge 
and uh, I'm going to paint a lot of this just that color. I'm going to leave uh, some uh, white over here on this side, but the rest of this side I'm just going to paint pretty much uh, Cambodge. There's my river, there's my horizon coming down through here, my river. I'm going to paint uh, a little of those uh, trees using this uh, warm color just for a uh, background, just for a little hint. I'm going to go back and soften some edges later, but not yet. I think I'm going to use a uh, burnt sienna. See what happens if I do that. Right now I'm just painting these uh, big shapes in because I'm trying to design my areas. Just trying to capture the essence of this. Orange makes a big difference. I think I'm going to connect that over here. I don't want to put this river in yet because uh, I don't know what it's reflecting yet. I haven't painted it, but I do have this lovely lilac kind of color in and I'm going to put some of that in there right now. Nice bridge uh, kind of color. Uh, And that color is getting to be kind of green. I'm going to use some of the uh, my yellow and that purple that, that I had uh, in the previous painting. And uh, just put some uh, green tinge down through there. And of course on that side. Now I do have to make, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use kind of a gamboge kind of color. 
and uh, I'm going to take the tops of those and maybe that part of it. I'm p actually painting green right now. It doesn't look like it, does it? So now I'm going to add some uh, blue to that uh, green. I want to keep that shoreline a little bit uh, I'm using gamboge as my yellow instead of uh, instead of uh, ah, too much instead of the lemon yellow. Uh, so now I can get you know, most of this is about the value now. It's not about the color. Is gamboge like a combination of orange and yellow, or it's got red? It's a ye yellow with some red in it. I haven't put in any real darks in yet. Uh, I am going to put in a little bit of that color over here, uh, so that connects. Want that to be even darker, so. All you gotta do is basically just touch these guys with this brush and it makes these great little pine trees. <laughs> Let's connect some of those so we have a cluster instead of a whatever. I'm gonna I'm going to make a one tall pine tree here. And I haven't put uh, any of the darks in yet. I'm going to leave this as a nice. It's my big brush. Need some darks in here now, huh? But not yet, because we still have this river. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, big brush and use some of that uh, color that I used before. I have this kind of this uh, gray color. I'm gonna leave some of this uh, white up here. Yeah. Um. 
this kind of stays. I want that uh, sparkly stroke, a little bit of it. I have to brush this quickly, otherwise it's uh, going to Why these brushes hold a lot of water. Yes, they do. Oh, I haven't put that tree in yet. A little bit of blue. And at some point we're going to have to let this dry a little bit. So I think we have time to do that for a, a taste. Back to my I'm going to have to go back with a little bit of gouache, I think. I missed. Yeah, it comes up under these cells. It sets on the west, it just shadows everything out. It's behind the Sierras. <coughs> that same spot took several pictures and looked different every day mm. with the clouds mm. and the light. Every day it was different, which is cool to go back to the same spot every day and start with. You know, the cloud formations too. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
I missed my water bucket. What? I missed my water bucket. It's almost as one of those things where you want to draw it out. I'm not painting any of Holly's stuff anymore. It's too complicated. I'll make this more dramatic and then I'm pretty much had it. Oh yeah, I didn't do that. I didn't do that part.
Okay. Let me soften the sky up a tad. I'm not going to get out any gouache at this time, but this is that's what I would be doing next. Is uh, just to work that a little bit, get a little more detail in there, and uh, I like I like this. So why am I putzing with it? Because I like it. <laughs> just want this to be a little lighter right through there. This is. Okay, let's see what we got. So now we can make adjustments. That would be the time to make adjustments is pull the tape off, see what we got, make some design decisions. And um, see if we can improve the light or whatever we were trying, why we were painting this. Anyway, uh, so that's kind of, sort of, pretty much, sort of like I was sitting on a rock over here, figure out what to make next. Uh, that's uh, absolutely more uh, brighter, saturated in that, but. Uh, you kind of get the idea of, at least you get the idea of how I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that helps or not, but yeah. uh, I think I'm going to uh, soften this guy a little bit. Yep. There we go. That's not too bad. Uh, let's see if I took a little bit of my white paint because I had the time. I took a little bit of my white paint and some of this uh, gamboge, which I've totally destroyed up here in the corner. So now I've made uh, some gouache. Uh, so now I could say, okay, so this kind of goes like that, and this one comes down there, and that little bluff, and these guys are like little soldiers here, really. So that defines that, and that carries this guy over a little bit more because that's so white. So let's make that white. And then that will help the other, other one figure it out. So if I were doing a larger painting of this, of course, uh, I would be doing a little more drawing to figure that part out. But uh, overall, I think uh, it'll do for what my purposes are. I just love the way watercolor, you can go back and lift it and do all kinds of 
creative stuff with it. Just to give some nuance to that. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I'm gonna use straight uh, gamboge. If I can get some straight gamboge. I wanted to put a few of these guys, oops, a few of uh, these guys right down in here, this little kind of hot spot. And I need it brighter than that. See where that little grove of should be, it should be uh, hotter than that, but uh, I guess I can't get the paint on quite thick enough. Anyway, they're just, uh, it was just a little thing that I noticed that I forgot. So as far as I'm concerned, <sighs> Anyway, it's it's a uh, it's an impression. It still bothers me when I put that top on there. I know it's kind of there, but it still bothers me. So I'll get rid of some of it. What? Uh, hey, Joe. What what color did you use for the bottom of that cloud like that? What is it? Ross uh, Rossiana. It's a choice. Yellow, to me, raw sienna is a better color than yellow ochre because it is a little more earthy. Well, it depends on what you're painting, but yellow ochre is really a, uh, quite yellow to me. I can add yellow to raw sienna. I can't do the other 